my dear students in this video we will write our first linked list program but before actually writing our first linked list program we should understand the size of operator and also we should understand malloc function first let us discuss size of operator size of operator returns the number of bytes allocated i think with an example it will be more clear let us consider the following program yes see here int a b c a b c are integer variables d is an integer array which can store 10 elements next x y z are float variables v is a float array which can store 10 elements m n p are character variables t is a character array which can store 10 elements very good now we will declare one structure also yes so what is s1 s1 is a variable of the type structure of the type node yes we have de defined one structure also s1 is a structure variable now a is equal to size of b what is b b is an integer variable for integer variable how many bytes are required two bytes are required therefore what is size of b 2 see this b is an integer variable and hence it is allocated two bytes so what is size of b 2 therefore what is stored in a 2 will be stored in a next b is equal to size of x what is x x is a float variable so for float variable how many bytes are required four bytes are required so x is a float variable and hence it is allocated four bytes what is size of x 4 so what will be stored in b 4 next c is equal to size of m what is m m is a character variable so for a character variable you require only one byte so m is a character variable and hence it is allocated one byte so what is size of m one byte so one is stored in c next print f a b c so what will be printed for a Two bytes, four bytes, and one byte. Very simple. A is two, B is four, and C is one. They store the size of the integer variable B, float variable X, and character variable M respectively. Now, size of D A is equal to size of D. What is D? D is an integer array which can store ten elements. See, for storing one element, you require two bytes. For storing ten elements, you require twenty bytes. So D is an integer array of size 10, and hence it is allocated 20 bytes. So what is size of D? 20. So A will contain 20. Next, B is equal to size of V. What is V? V is a float array which can store 10 elements. So for one element you require 4 bytes. For 10 elements you require 40 bytes. So V is a float array of size 10, and hence it is allocated 40 bytes. Therefore, what is size of V? 40. So, what will be stored in B? 40. Yes. C is equal to size of T. What is T? T is a character array which can store 10 elements. For one element, you require one byte. For 10 elements, you require 10 bytes. So, T is a character array of size 10, and hence it is allocated 10 bytes. So, what is size of T? 10. So, what will be stored in C? 10. Print F. So A B C, what will be printed for A B C? Ten. That is for A twenty, for B forty, and for C ten. Twenty forty ten. Next, size of S one. What is S one? S one is a structure variable. So how many bytes will be allocated for S one? Four bytes. Because inside the structure there are two members. One is item, the other one is next. Item is of the type integer. Therefore two bytes are allocated for item. Next is a pointer. Any pointer, two bytes. Therefore, for next also two bytes are allocated. So two plus two is four. Totally four bytes are allocated for yes one. Yes, yes one is a structure variable and it is allocated four bytes. Two for the variable and two for the pointer. Yes, print up here. So how much will be printed? Four will be printed. that's all i think size of operator is very simple it returns the number of bytes allocated for whatever operand we give within size of now we will discuss malloc function malloc 
or memory allocation will dynamically allocate a single block of memory with the specified size meaning one block of memory is allocated dynamically dynamically means during the execution of the program so malloc stands for memory allocation let us see the syntax so ptr is equal to pointer type malloc byte size so how many bytes we require that we have to give in byte size malloc will allocate that much size and which pointer is pointing to that allocated memory that pointer type we have to write within the brackets here and that pointer type is assigned to the left side ptr see pointer type and the left side ptr should be of the same type here it is integer there also it should be integer like that anyway we will understand with an example yes example when you can just see int star ptr so what is ptr ptr is an integer pointer below you just see ptr is equal to int star meaning what is the pointer type returning pointer type it's an integer pointer malloc 50 so malloc 50 will allocate 50 bytes okay malloc will allocate 50 bytes of memory and ptr will hold the address of the first memory location ptr will contain the address of the first memory location so 50 bytes are allocated in the memory ptr will contain the address of the first memory location let us consider another example float star ptr now ptr is a float pointer next ptr is equal to float star what is the meaning of float star the return type is a float pointer okay the the memory allocated will be pointed by a float pointer and that float pointer address will be written back now malloc 100 into size of float what is size of float 4 bytes so what is 100 into 4 400 so malloc will allocate 400 bytes so malloc will allocate 400 bytes 100 into 4 of memory and ptr will hold the address of the first memory location so what is ptr ptr is a float pointer yes so malloc will allocate a single block of memory and the address of that memory is stored in a pointer that pointer type we have to write very simple malloc allocation malloc function next very important we will go to the point where we are declaring a node for a single linked list very very important see first we should understand self referential structures we have understood structures but very easy self referential structures contain a pointer as its member which points to the same structure i'll repeat again self referential structures contain a pointer as its member which points to the same structure i think with an example it will be more clear the node of a single linked list can be defined as a structure as follows now carefully understand here struct node first member int info no problem info is, is the first member it is of the type integer next carefully understand next is a pointer what type of pointer is next next is a structure type of pointer what type of structure node type of structure carefully understand within the structure node there is a pointer to structure node only therefore it is self-referential structure i'll repeat again within the declaration of struct node you have a pointer to struct node as a member of that particular structure therefore it is self-referential structure so struct node is a self-referential structure as the pointer next is pointed to the same structure very simple and info requires two bytes next is a pointer any type of pointer require two bytes that also two bytes totally four bytes are required for the structure node four bytes are required now struct node p what is p p is a pointer to the struct node yes how to allocate memory for the structure node how to allocate memory for the structure node here fully understand this is the statement just now we discussed malloc function we also discussed size of function first let us understand size of size of struct node so what is how many bytes will be allocated for struct node four bytes because two bytes for the integer uh, variable and two bytes for the pointer so what is size of struct node four bytes so malloc will allocate four bytes 
<clears throat> now who should contain the address of these four bytes the address of these four bytes should be stored in a structure pointer structure node pointer therefore within the brackets you can just say struct node star meaning the address of these four bytes should be stored in a structure pointer of the type node so left hand side there is p what should be p p should be a pointer to the structure node yes already we have declared struct node star p and whenever you give this statement pictorially it is like this we are allocated a node which is pointed by p yes two partitions are there because in the, the struct node there are two members therefore two partitions are there what is the first one info p arrow info what is the second one p arrow next and also all of you know the members of the structure can be accessed by the structure pointer using the arrow operator therefore p is a structure pointer therefore info is accessed using p arrow info next is accessed using p arrow next so declaration of a node in a singly linked list very simple uh, very straightforward no problem at all now we are ready to write our first linked list program a simple a linked list program yes let us write a simple program to create a singly linked list with two nodes only two nodes we will have in this linked list yes let us declare the structure for the singly linked list node just now we uh, discussed that struct node int info and a pointer to the same struct node that is struct node star next self referential structure yes we have declared a structure yes and also you can just observe here struct node is declared globally that is it can be used in the main program as well as in functions so uh, it is declared outside the main program therefore it becomes global yes main program let us create three structure pointers p q and start that is struct node star p star q and star start start we have also initialized to null so we have declared three pointers p q and start start is also initialized to null now let us create our first node pointed by p see how to get a node pointed by p pictorially we write like this p arrow uh, two partition box but in the programming how to get it yes just now we discussed that also p is equal to struct node star malloc size of struct node so we get a node which is pointed by p so after getting this node what actually we have to do we have to store some value in that node also that is 10 should be stored let us let us understand let us assume 10 should be stored so what is that how to access that particular first member p arrow info is equal to 10 see first member is info pointer p how it can access the first member info using the arrow operator therefore p arrow info is equal to 10 and also we will make the address part is equal to null that is p arrow next is equal to null okay so we are ready with a uh, with one node with one node which is pointed by p let us create our second node pointed by q yes so pictorially yes q is pointing to a node which has two partitions yes fine but how to write that uh, statement in the program same thing q is equal to struct node star malloc size of struct node you have got a new node which is pointed by q next we will store one value in the Q also that is 20 so what is the statement that we have to write in the program q arrow info is equal to 20 very good next yes what is the statement that we have to write q arrow next is equal to null very good we have created two nodes one is pointed by p the other one is pointed by q now let us link the two nodes let us connect the two nodes how to connect in two nodes address part of p should be connected to q so for that what we have to do is p of next right now it is equal to null instead of null we have to store the address of q that is p of next is equal to q that's all very very simple p of next is equal to q so the two nodes are connected so p is connected to q the two nodes are connected now 
and start let it contain the address of the first node always hmm? so start is equal to p yes start is equal to p yes now always start will point to the first node of the list why did we have this start it's a common notation whenever linked list is there we always see that start will contain the address of the first node yes in a, in this particular case start will contain the address of the first node there are two nodes yes but can we create a linked list like this suppose i want to create a linked list with 1000 nodes can i do like this creating 1000 nodes separately and no that becomes a huge no program we cannot do that actually we should create a linked list using loops okay uh, anyway uh, creation can be done using uh, uh, two ways by continuously inserting at the beginning by continuously inserting at the end so creation of the linked list i'll be uh, dealing in the next videos but carefully understand this is your first linked list program a simple linked list program with two nodes one pointed by p one pointed by q but more than that start will contain the address of the linked list very simple uh, you should understand how memory is allocated how values are stored how addresses are changed that you should understand using the simple program 